Hey guys, I've got a game review now. Um, this is something I'm doing for Chess Boot Camp live members. Um, and this is from Wixter911. And it's a, a recent loss that he's asked me to, to check out. So all we're going to do is we're going to play through the game and I will try and uh, identify current areas maybe of weakness, things that, that um, Chad is overlooking. And let's go. Okay, so we've got an e4, e5 game. King's Knight comes out. And d4, so this is now the Scotch. We have pawn takes and knight takes. Okay, so I think this is like mainline stuff. We've now got two attackers on the knight. Both players are rated in the 1100 to 1200 uh, rating. So here, Obviously, you don't want to um, undevelop the knight, really. So ideas could be c3, could be bishop e3 to add another defender, also developing a piece. And uh, OK, there's an alternative. So we have a trade of knights. Now, if black captures with the queen's pawn, then we have the option to trade queens, force the king to move, which at this stage in the game is... Um, definitely an advantage. Also very much weakens the f7 pawn if we can get a knight over there but that's going to take some time. The knight can come this way. If black recaptures with the b pawn then black's going to end up with three pawn islands so not ideal and we have the three pawn islands. Okay so black's kept the queen on the board, but this could now be a weakness later on in the game. We would be expecting d5 to come at some point, trying to trade off and uh, undouble the c pawns. So now at this point, we're in the opening, so we want to keep developing. And ooh, that's an unusual move. Because now if we trade bishops, then white is going to end up with doubled pawns on the e-file and also three pawn islands. Uh, black does go for that and we end up with a, a really compromised pawn structure. So in here I would classify that as, as an error. Much better at this point in time probably to develop this bishop, get ready to castle. It would leave the king in the line of fire of this bishop and pinning the f-pawn, but that's okay. Um, also, developing this knight is fine. Yeah, I think I think for this one even, Fianchettoing the bishop to target the uh, weak g7-pawn and the rook behind it would be an idea. But this I'm not too happy about. Um, this is a 10-minute rapid game. Okay, and now black plays slightly slow d6. I, I might have gone for d5 straight off here. And now we develop the bishop, okay, looking at here. So the queen also has a nice line. So the queen could come to here or to here, both potentially targeting a checkmate on f7. Even so, I mean, castling here is not too bad an idea because it also puts the rook straight onto that uh, semi-open f-file. We have the knight coming out. And now black's getting ready to castle. Uh, white develops the queen onto the f-file. Still need to develop the final knight as well. Um, but the queen is, because the knight's attacking this pawn, so that's understandable. The queen's come out to defend. And now a second attacker on there. So what are we going to do? Drop the bishop down here. or? Even better, maybe develop the knight to defend the pawn. Okay, the knight comes out to c3, that's good. And now white has options of castling either side, both of which actually will put a rook onto a semi open file. Okay, bishop comes out now attacking the queen. So the queen clearly wants to keep protecting this pawn, so I think there's only really one move there, isn't there? Yep, yeah, queen f4, bishop now retreats and we have tension now this bishop is undefended so something must be done 
You don't want to be pushing D, uh, B3 here, because then we end up with a, a real mess of pawns. So we trade off OK. Now I would probably castle. So the question is, which way do we go? There are two, uh, com well, two semi-open files from Black's perspective. This one, if we, so if we castle along here, then we might be vulnerable in this corner. Castling short would double up the queen and the uh, rook on the f-file, which is interesting. So here white castles long. This pawn is defended by the knight. This pawn is defended by the king. Um, we have still two attackers on here with two defenders. So all still to play for. Notice that this pawn is undefended. Black castles, very logical. So at this point, you'd be wanting to think about maybe pushing the uh, the pawns on the king side, now that we've got an opposite side castle situation. Um, but the queen now drops back. It means that this pawn is now defended, but the pawn was defended there anyway by the queen. So maybe the idea here is to push and maybe target this pawn with a discovered attack by the queen. And now a third attacker. Yeah. So rook d4 would offer some defense, but maybe only temporary. Okay, here Chad now pushes h4. We're going for an aggressive assault, and knight takes, and we trade off. Okay. Now we also have an issue with this pawn, which is attacked twice. So maybe bring the rook from d1 to e1. It doesn't seem to make sense. I know we trade off. Okay, a lot of trading going on. Okay, so we're in a situation where we're actually a pawn down. This pawn is undefended and is likely to be attacked twice, so we might have to end up lifting both rooks. This is also an isolated pawn. So that's one defender. And white now chooses to give up this pawn. Yep, and we trade off again. Lots of lots of trades. Now here, hmm. Pawn takes, rook takes. We're not in danger of a back rank here. Um, okay, king does go to d2. Puts the pressure on the rook, can't go here. Might go here. And that would mean that we need to drop our rook back. But no, we have a, a face off of rooks again. White pulls this rook back. So let's just review. We've got three and a singleton. Black has a three with double pawns and three singletons. Hmm. Targets the pawn, pushes to defend. This does now limit the scope of this rook slightly. Okay, h6. And now c4, so we have, okay, centralizing the king here. Might end up having to, okay, so now the, what's the rook? looking at because the, the king's doing a good job of defending on this open file it's the only completely open file on the board king's also now defending this pawn so it means that this rook is now free to move you might think about dropping back to the second rank to defend okay we move forwards to the fourth rank to defend this pawn here and check now here i would definitely have centralized the king you want to keep the king in the middle of the board protecting these key squares here from the marauding rook. Um, at least the king is still defending this pawn. Rook comes back. We have a check. King moves to one side. Now this king is stuck on these two squares. So here again, I would be thinking about centralizing the king. The big threat here is the rook coming down with a fork. So yeah, good, king f3. I like, I like that. Even bringing the king across to here at some point would be fine, because he still defends these important squares. But we are definitely um, on the back foot at this point in time. The plus side is that black's king is quarantined over there. But this rook now, you see, can't, hasn't got time to come round to defend the second, the second rank. Okay, we go after this pawn, and now black can force 
a trade of rooks. And we have a trade of rooks. Okay, so here, very important to press ahead and try and limit this king. That's the only advantage that white has at this point in time. <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe I would have moved the king up at that point rather than the pawn. And now we, we've got a problem because this pawn is likely to come down, which will force the king to move away from the defense of this one. And uh, I would expect, yeah, now the king's got to move away and we lose that pawn. Right, so now we have a, a, a minority of pawns here on the queen side, plus black has that, so I think it's going to end fairly quickly. Yeah, okay. And black's just here sweeping up. Yeah, it's all going to end very soon. <laughs> and are we going to see three queens? Okay, three queens. And there we go. Nice little uh, checkmate pattern there. So what went wrong? What went wrong in this game? Well, let's go through it again quickly. I think the first... This is fairly standard. And here we've compromised black's pawn structure slightly. This was, I think, the big mistake in the game to play the bishop to here because you have to say oh, okay if i do that what's my opponent's best response and clearly bishop takes and pawns the only thing that can recapture so here I, I think that developing move was not the right one i would have gone for something like bishop out here get the king castled and then we can think about trying to prove the point that these pawns are weak there's no point uh, weakening our own pawns in this way so early on in the game right having doubled isolated pawns on the e-file not great and also we should have um yeah probably got castled a bit quicker as well so here developing move queen develops yeah again i'm not entirely convinced with this move um and, and we end up in this situation now where we've just got barrage against these pawns. And this is the problem when you've got doubled and isolated pawns, because these pawns can now only ever be defended by pieces. And that's a, that's a hindrance for white here. Right? You want to keep your pawns on adjacent files where they can defend each other in a chain. But as we see, now we harass the queen, now we trade off. Um, so here I think castling would have made a lot of sense. Get the rook onto this semi-open file. Um, but yeah, we castle long, and that's, that's not too bad. But now black just exploits this weakness here. Again, throwing a pawn up. You can kind of see what um, white's thinking here. But I think, you know, basically it was, it was all just down to this, this, this poor bishop move early on with this move here. Um, completely unnecessary. I'll have a quick look at the game review and see what the machine thinks. Okay. So let's go through the, the basic opening. This is all book and book. And there we go. And yeah, mistake. Clear mistake. So... Prior to that move, white had a very slight edge in the game. This is clearly a mistake. The computer says a better move would have been, okay, bishop d3, making the bishop into a tall pawn, um, just joining into the pawn chain here, but that's okay. Um, other ideas, what does it think of bishop c4? Still equal for uh, both players. Um, but it was an idea so yeah so basically as we can see in, in the uh, review from this point uh, black's already doing quite well black does lose a bit of advantage at this point so what happened there okay so d6 yeah I wasn't quite happy with d6 um, best move for black here would have been Okay, yeah, there's a fork. Yeah. And it's again, it's all caused by that one sloppy move in the opening. All right, so um, that was a, uh, a bigger advantage there for black. 
which black missed. So we have this. Bishop c4 now, a mistake, a better move would have been develop the knight. Mm -hmm. knight. Knight defends this pawn, which is already a liability. Both these pawns are a liability now for, for white. So, yeah, I think if we um, go back to the game, how long was spent on this move here? 14 seconds there for white. And it's clearly not a standard idea. I mean, you know, white would have loved to have captured that bishop, but that's just not going to happen. You, you have to think, if I do this, what's my opponent's best response? Or, or what could my opponent do, okay? If bishop takes bishop, I have to recapture with the f-pawn, and does that leave me in a stronger position, or does it leave my opponent in a stronger position? And here, very clearly, it, it's it's only, you know, even you, you only have to think about a couple of moves, and white is already severely um, hamstrung from that point in time. So, yeah, I think we need to take more care over guarding the pawn structure um, and and just watching out for weakening, obviously weakening moves, right? But, you know, this is kind of what, what you expect this and this is what you will be working on in the 1100 to 1200 range. So, uh, Chad Wixter, I hope that has been um, some use for you. And um, yeah, you just you just want to be keeping keeping things more more normal, really. Um, you know, standard principled opening moves. This this pawn is is currently undefended, so let's defend it. Bring the knight out to defend. Um, again, you know this this move is is perfectly okay. Now this pawn is very well looked after, and as we as we saw in the game. That pawn um, really was the undoing of White's whole position, and now now we're getting ready to castle. This bishop's not fantastic; can't go there. You know, this is a bad place. I think probably here something like that would have been worth considering. And here maybe just hang on. So how many we've got? Uh, two attackers on there, two defenders. That's all right. Castle. If pawn takes. Um, yeah, we've got like knight takes, and and another thing is also just to um, just to watch out for trades as well. I think a, a lot of people at lower levels will trade almost automatically um, and clear the board. And when you've got a, a worse pawn structure, I mean here black, you know this is the liability for black. So there's no reason to give ourselves the same um, the same issue as our opponent does. But, you know, a setup like this perfectly playable. And I would give White the, the advantage here. So, yeah, hope that's useful. Hope it's been useful for you, for you as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon.